Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Uh, today we're taking a look at a pretty common one, the FN FAL Type C bayonet. Now these are obviously made to fit the uh, FN FAL. Uh, or rather they'll only fit um, FN FALs with a 22mm uh, Stanag muzzle device and uh, they came into effect a little bit later after the initial production. But uh, this style of bayonet, there's a lot of different variations out there. They're all pretty much the same, and it can be incredibly difficult to tell them apart. I'm uh, certainly no expert myself. But um, from what I can tell, they were made by at least four different manufacturers. They were made by FN in Belgium, which is what we have here. They were made by Imbel in Brazil. Uh, Imbel is a acronym. I can't quite remember what for. It's one of their manufacturing plants. Uh, they were... Also made for, uh, sorry, they're made by uh, A Econ in Solingen or Solingen in Germany, and I believe they were commercial variants. They weren't uh, issued to a specific military. And uh, finally, the last manufacturer I've tracked down is Arms Corps in South Africa. That's another acronym. Now, this style of bayonet was made from 1962 onwards. It's not clear when production stopped, and they were made in the millions. Like, um, I, I don't have any idea how many of these were made, but there were 7 million fouls, over 7 million fouls made, um, according to what I found online. And the vast majority would have taken this, like, you know, probably 70 to 80%, if not more, would have taken this style of bayonet. So, they're very cheap, very easy to find. Um, they're, they're actually quite nice. I never particularly liked them because I'm really partial to uh, bayonets that resemble a knife or a sword and this is really just a, a spike with a funny shaped blade on it but um, I quite like it. Anyway, a little bit of history. So the Fowl entered service from uh, 1953 onwards and uh, initially it was issued with the Type A bayonet. So I'll put this to the side and I'll discuss the Type A. Now I've already got a video on this one here but the uh, Type A's were uh, reasonably expensive and complicated to manufacture because they have a, a constant recoil system in the handle. If you're curious about that, watch my other video on it. It's a great video. And um, after the Type A, a couple of um, their clients weren't too happy with the uh, flash hider prongs on the muzzle ring. So the Type B came out and they were removed. Now, uh, when NATO... Uh, issued their Stanag in, I think it was the late 50s, I can't find the exact date. It was essentially a uh, standardised agreement that um, all NATO members or participants would uh, use a muzzle device being 22mm so they could all use interchangeable rifle grenades. Uh, not that too many people were actually using rifle grenades, <laughs> everyone thought they would, but you know, we don't use them these days. Anyway, so... Uh, FNFALs were designed to uh, have a 22mm uh, muzzle device and the old FAL A's and B's with their small muzzle rings of about 15mm, they no longer fit. So they had to adapt and uh, they didn't want to have to go and uh, produce another really expensive and complicated bayonet. They went to back to basics and um, readopted a socket. So very easy to manufacture, very cheap to manufacture. Doesn't take a lot of specialised equipment and uh, a lot of different uh, companies would be more than capable to do it, as uh, is what happened. Now, in total, these were used by about uh, 90 different countries, from what I can tell. Uh, both military, police, gendarmerie, <laughs> all kinds of different organisations use these. Uh, and it's extremely difficult to tell which organisation a... Um, specific bayonet or even what country produced it it can be very very difficult because generally they're, they're unmarked but um, I'll get to that in a second I might start by going through the construction so as you can probably see got a blade here at the front with a flat edge on the top and then we have a rounded edge on the bottom and that culminates in a point and they've actually cut it into like a uh, triform uh, bayonet towards the other uh, the point there. So the sides aren't sharp like they're, they're they're crisp But they're not sharp. I wouldn't go as far as say they're sharp And the whole thing is one piece except for the catch And it comes back into a socket which goes over the muzzle device uh, We have our four flash holes for the muzzle device on the foul and they line up with the uh, flash hider that would be put in place 
Then uh, moving down, thickens down at the pommel, and we've got this catch here. So the catch, you pull it down. I'll pull it down from the other side. It's the same on both sides. And there's an actual catch inside here. When you pull it down, it disengages. So you slide it on. I assume it's ramped, is it? It is. You're probably not going to be able to see it with my lighting arrangement. But it's got a uh, ramped lug inside. When you pull this down, it disengages from the rifle. And if you just slide it straight on, the ramp will drop it until uh, it goes past and it'll engage and uh, lock in place. So extremely simple. Uh, you will find a couple of different styles of um, these lugs. So this is what we call the wing style because uh, at the edge it tapers out to these little wings on either side. Just as commonly you'll find these with like um, horizontal serrations for grip so you can just grip it. And I think there's a couple of the really early ones that don't have either of those arrangements. But generally those are what you're going to find. Now, you get different finishes. Uh, some are parkerized, some are parkerized and painted, some are painted. This appears to be parkerized and painted, which is very typical of Belgium. And um, a couple of the different manufacturers, I noticed while looking at photos that the connection between what I call the pommel, the back piece here, and the body, see how it's sort of ramped going up there? That's not the case with all of them. It appears, I think it was the Brazilian and South African didn't have that. And it was just like a two separate pieces. Didn't have that ramp. It was like a little 90 degree angle in there. But that's the bayonet itself. Uh, I might move down to the scabbard. Now, just as with the bayonet, there are a lot of different kinds of scabbards and they're all very subtly different. Uh, they come in plastic and uh, metal. Most of them, nearly all of them, have a integral frog, so a canvas frog that's actually connected or riveted onto the scabbard. This one here is plastic, and it has a uh, steel frog stud just here, and a steel mouth. And you can see which way the blade goes in. So it goes in handle facing outwards, as you can see, like that. Now, there are some variations of these scabbards where the handle faces inwards and the frog stub would be on the outside. And those are generally South African. However, I won't say that as a rule because I don't know for sure. Um, I've only come across 14 or 15 different styles of these and that, you know, they're issued to 90 different countries. So I, I can't be certain there's that many different variations out there and random funny things. So um, I'll just comment on the one I've got here and uh, a couple of them are common ones. Now, uh, I might jump into very quick the uh, the markings you're likely to find on these. So out of the factory, they're unmarked, or at least uh, FN, they're unmarked. Now, you will come across a couple of these with markings on them, and uh, I've been able to figure out what three or four of them are. So Rhodesia will mark the top of the pom pommel in uh, electro pen. And they'll have RA and then four digits. I assume RA is uh, the Rhodesian Army or something like that. And the four numbers being a serial number. Or, yeah, rack number, I don't know. Maybe matching a rifle. Uh, Brazil, they will have unmarked bayonets and their frogs, I believe they are still plastic, I can't recall. Uh, sorry, the scabbards are still plastic. They have the, uh, the frog, it's like a funny light green colour. It looks very Brazilian, the colour. And um, it'll have little buttons on it, like little um, rivets almost. Or is it the snaps, the snap on the, the hilt strap, I can't remember. But if you look closely at those, they will say Eberle, E-B-E-R-L-E. And uh, that's how you know it's Brazilian, because only the Brazilian ones have that marking uh, on the rivets or buttons on the frog. Uh, also found the South African ones, uh, pretty typical of what you'd expect. They'll have the... Um, South African proof mark being the um, capital M, capital U uh, together. And uh, that'll probably be on the body somewhere or maybe on the scabbard. And they'll also have a six digit serial number, at least the ones that I've come across. Uh, German ones will, um, the ones made in Germany, I came across a photo of one that said uh, Zollingen, Germany uh, in white on the blade. Now, I don't know if that is standard for all of them that were made or if that was an import requirement for a specific bayonet that was imported to America because I've seen 
a lot of um, bayonets from the 70s and 80s uh, imported into America with those kind that style of import mark, uh, white uh, paint or ink on the blade saying Germany or Zollenschen Germany. Uh, another one I found is the Argentinian one. They will have a serial number along, again, what I'm calling the pommel, except instead of being electro pencil, they'll actually be stamped in. Now, I'm pretty sure that um, Argentina weren't manufacturing them, but they very well could have been. They had the, um, the factories, they were producing the uh, Type A's, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if they were producing these as well. And the ones they were producing, if they were serial numbering them uh, at factory, I have no way of knowing. I can't find any information on the subject. But uh, those are the ones I've been able to track down. And I'm certain there's that many more out there. I mean, they're issued to 90 different countries. Every country is going to have a very different style of um, serial numbering or accounting, uh, marking, proofing. And um, there's all kinds of funny markings out there you could come across. So... Um, while these are very, very common, they're still very cheap because they're not particularly collectible because they're not uh, something you can sort of use as a, a knife. Like, you know, something like your Type A or your other kinds of bayonets, you can sort of hold them and they, they you know, feel like, like a knife, they look like a knife, they feel like they have another purpose. Whether a socket bayonet or something like this, um, well, A, they're very common and B, they're a bit, you know, odd. So they're... Uh, a lot less people buying them and they don't sell for as much so um you can still get them pretty cheap i'm trying to track down a couple more i want to get a uh, argentinian one i think that'd be pretty awesome i love all the argentinian stuff also after an argentinian type a you got my belgian and south african anyway if you've got one of these and you can't figure out which one it is based on my description now uh one website i found when i was doing a little bit of research for this video was um well, I've used this website a lot, uh, worldbayonets.com. Uh, there is a whole page dedicated to these, and I think they had uh, 10 or 11 examples with in-depth photographs and explanations. I think they'd probably be the more common ones. So um, that's what I used to help identify this one here. That was a great source of information, and it's, it's free. You don't have to um, put a mortgage on the missus to... Uh, buy a book because bayonet books are very very expensive these days anyway guys if i've made any mistakes or uh, missed anything critical or you got any other information please feel free to comment below i'd love to hear from you and thanks for watching